Howdy my totally tubular gamers and we are back for yet another ranking video and it's going to be another Sonic ranking video and today's Sonic ranking video is on every Sonic racing game. We're going to be ranking all of the Blue Blur's racing games throughout the years. Now Sonic has had a ton of racing games and a lot of people don't even realize there's more Sonic racing games than Mario Kart games. There's more Sonic racing games than any other mascot character in video games. And I don't think I've ever seen a series of racing games that are so wildly different from each other. Like there's even sub-series in the Sonic racing series. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. All of these games are quite different from each other and they are very varying in quality. Like some of these games are really great and some of them as you'll see are really not. I'd say the most consistent theme is that they are all racing games and that they all have really good music. I think every single game on this list has quite good music as you'll hear throughout the video. Growing up I did play a lot of these games. I played a lot of them when they actually came out as I still am a massive Mega Sonic fan and I just love Sonic but I can admit some of these racing games they ain't so great. But you know what? We're going to rank them. We're going to rank every Sonic racing game that is released. We're going to rank them based off of the sense of speed, how much fun it is, how's the AI, is it super rubber bandy, is the music really, really awesome, or is it just awesome? Just kind of, you know, everything. And I'd love to know what you people think in the comments. Tell me your favorite Sonic racing game. Tell me why I'm an idiot, or you know what, just tell me something. And of course, like, share, subscribe. So, what do I think is the weakest of the Sonic racing games? What's the worst of the worst? You probably already knew, but Sonic Freeriders really is the worst Sonic racing game of them all. The game was actually developed by Sonic Team, and it's uh, one of the worst games Sonic Team has ever made, and it's all ruined by the Kinect. The Kinect absolutely ruined any chance of Sonic Freeriders being good. The motion controlled racing, it could have been fun, it could have been interesting, however it just does not work 90% of the time in this game. Going across the menus is even awful. This is one of the worst experiences you could possibly ever have with motion controls in a video game. And the less said about this game, the better. Let's move on. Our next racing game is Sonic Drift. Now Sonic Drift is not as broken as that previous game, however I wouldn't say it's a very good racing game and it's certainly not very fun. It came out in 1994 on the Game Gear, only in Japan, however it was on pretty much every Sonic re-release collection and I played this through the Sonic Adventure DX GameCube port. Now being a racing game on the Game Gear in the 90s, you wouldn't exactly expect this game to be very exciting, fun, engaging, or interesting. And you'd be right on all those accounts because this game, well, it's just none of those. The game is clearly inspired by Super Mario Kart, and I'm not a big Super Mario Kart guy, but I can say Super Mario Kart is a lot better than this game. A lot of the tracks are as bare bones as it gets. These are some of the most uninteresting tracks you will find in a racing game. The controls are not very good, they're very slippery, the drifting just doesn't feel very good, and for a game titled Sonic Drift, you would think the drift would actually feel nice or control well, but it doesn't do either of those. And the race is just, well, I mean, there's just really nothing going on here. There's only four playable characters of Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Eggman, and there's items to use, and there's some turns you do, and there's a couple tracks in the game, there's seriously like not even a dozen tracks in the game, and and that's just kind of the game. There's really not all that much to it. It's not unplayable. It's not broken and buggy as shit like a certain other game on this list. But, I mean, there's just really nothing here. There's really nothing to talk about. I mean, there's no reason to ever play this. Ever. And so now we have the sequel to Sonic Drift known as Sonic Drift 2, which was also released on the Game Gear a year later and was actually released in America initially as well. This added Knuckles, Fang the Sniper, and Metal Sonic as playable characters, some new tracks, and the gameplay is basically exactly the same. It's still pretty dull, very basic tracks, there's not much to it. It's a little more interesting with more racers. The horizon and just general draw distance is pretty bad. Really, there's not much to say about this game. Everything I just said about Sonic Drift 1 carries over to Sonic Drift 2, just with the more characters. I mean, there's just no reason to ever play this, like legit ever to play this, and it's better left forgotten. Our next racing game is Sonic Rivals for the PSP, released in 2006. 
Sonic Rivals is a pretty interesting racing game. It is from a 2.5D perspective, and there's no vehicles in it at all. You are strictly on foot. It plays more like actual Sonic the Hedgehog rather than a racing game. Really, you are just trying to get through the stage and avoid all the obstacles as fast as possible to try to beat your opponent, who is also doing the same stage concurrently with you. There are six zones in the game, and each zone has three acts to it, and one of them is a boss fight to try to mix things up a little bit. There's even power-ups you can get in this to try to make the racing just a little bit more interesting. The game even has a story, which is pretty odd, but it does have a story that sees Sonic basically just fighting Eggman and Eggman Nega from Sonic Rush, and it just happens to also see a bunch of Sonic characters racing to go beat up Eggman and do their own thing, basically. The story is just laughably bare bones, and I really don't understand why it was even here in the first place. And look, honestly, Sonic Rivals, it, it isn't a very good game. It is quite mediocre, and... I really didn't have all that much fun playing it. A lot of the levels and general design of the levels is really monotonous, boring, and it gets quite repetitive. There's a lot of copy and pasted ideas throughout these levels, and it just doesn't really do anything all that interesting. Once you've done a couple of these stages, you've pretty much seen everything that the game has to see in terms of level design. It just doesn't do anything crazy or something you haven't seen in a 2.5D video game. And then for the story mode, they want you to play through it with the other characters, not just Sonic. And it just got really repetitive, and I didn't even finish it. I was just like, this this is kind of boring. Like, this just isn't very fun. And as a racing game, I mean, it's an interesting concept, but I think it was done much better in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, where they had, like, a little racing multiplayer game. And I thought that was way more fun than anything this game offered. But what's better than Sonic Rivals? How about Sonic Rivals 2? Yeah, a year later on the PSP, we got Sonic Rivals 2, and it plays very similar to the first Sonic Rivals. The game is slightly better, and it is a little bit more interesting. There's three new playable characters to add, making for a total of eight, and every character has a signature move that they can use. You have to collect enough rings and destroy enemies to fill up that meter, but they do have moves such as Shadow does of Chaos Control, and you know, this makes it more like the fun racing multiplayer game that was in Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, but that's besides the point. The gameplay is relatively the same. You're still going through these courses, trying to get through it as fast as possible. Sadly, a lot of the level design is just not very interesting. It's very standard, it's very stock, and they added some new modes here and there to the game, but I don't really think they add all that much to it. In fact, I think that they're more repetitive than anything else. The game also has a new story to it that actually connects to Sonic 06 of all games. In fact, they reference it heavily, especially everything with Silver in this game, and, and really the less said about the story the better. I don't want any connection to Sonic 06 in like any Sonic game ever again, except Generations. Like, please, no more Sonic 06 anything. And you know, this game, it isn't bad. Sonic Rivals 1 and 2 aren't bad. I just think they're very mediocre racing experiences that ultimately are incredibly shallow, and Maybe it's because I don't actually have any multiplayer fun with this game. I never have played it with somebody, and maybe that's why I don't have much to say about it or like it very much, but maybe some of you have fond memories playing with like siblings or friends on the PSP that you were playing Sonic Rivals 1 and 2. Really, it's just an anomaly that there are two Sonic games that are only on PSP, and they're like these odd racing games. Like, what? Let's just move on to the next game that I think more people will know. And so here we have a pretty infamous racing game known as Sonic R, originally released for the Sega Saturn, but eventually PC and Sonic Gems Collection, which is where I played it. Now Sonic R is probably one of the most polarizing games I think I've ever seen. Some people online have said how oh, it's one of the worst Sonic games ever made and they just hate it, and others have said that it's pretty fun and it's pretty okay. And I tend to lean to the latter side, maybe it's because I do have a fair amount of nostalgia for it these days, but I still find Sonic R actually quite fun. It is a very, very strange racing game. It is in 3D, and most of the characters do race on foot. You go through the five courses, dodging all of its obstacles, finding shortcuts and collectibles, and trying to, of course, win the race. The controls, well, the controls aren't amazing. All the characters almost turn like freaking tanks. They can, like, kind of drift to influence their direction, but you pretty much have to come to a complete stop if you want to make it, like, a big turn, which is not ideal in any racing game, really, except maybe Kirby Air Ride. Every character has their own unique abilities also, like Sonic can double jump, Tails can fly, Knuckles can glide, Amy gets a boost with enough rings. 
Every character brings something different to the table. However, the balancing is just terrible in this game. Some characters are clearly way better than others. Characters like Eggman, Amy, Egg Robo, and Tails Doll, they suck in comparison to Sonic, Knuckles, Metal Knuckles, and especially Super Sonic. Once you get Super Sonic, it's just over. Like, if you play multiplayer like I have with my friends in the past, like, we just have a no Super Sonic rule. Balancing aside, I do actually really like the courses in this game. They're really interesting. There are tons of different routes in these courses. There's no one way to go. And I think that really plays to Sonic's strengths in general, how Sonic's always had tons of different ways to go in his 2D and 3D games. So it's really cool to see it in a racing game. And there's even collectibles to get, such as Chaos Emeralds and these tokens to unlock more characters and stages. It's a shame that even if you don't know what you're doing, you can probably collect everything in Sonic R in maybe like an hour, if you're not very good, like two hours at most, like there's just not all that much to do with it, which is a shame. But hey, at least it's really replayable. I've completed this game probably a dozen times in my life. I mean, I've always had fun with it. And one reason that I've always had fun with it is the music. Some people don't like the music, not me. I love Sonic R's music. I have it on my phone, my Spotify playlist. I got it all over the place. Sonic's Sonic R's music rules. It slaps, it bangs, it bops, it's all of them. Love the music. All in all though, Sonic R, it's a pretty middling game. I understand it is a very middling, average at best kind of game, and that's why I've got it in the middle of this list. But if you have any passing interest in this game at all, I can say try it, or at the very least listen to the music. The music is great. Our next racing game is Sonic Riders Zero Gravity, which is the sequel to Sonic Riders, released in 2008 for the Wii and PS2 by Sonic Team. I actually remember picking this one up like right when it came out on the Wii and was pretty excited for it. I quite liked the original Sonic Riders and well I was really excited for the sequel and the sequel it's it's alright. It plays very similarly to the first Sonic Riders with a lot of the same ideas. I can confidently say that the game's depth and skill ceiling are much much lower in zero gravity and things have been dumbed down quite a bit from Sonic Riders. However that does make it easier for someone to just pick up and play this game. The plot is pretty similar to the first Sonic Riders and sees the Babylon rogues really just kind of feuding with Sonic and his friends, this time with the Ark of the Cosmos, which are relics capable of controlling gravity, and eventually they have to stop feuding to fight a common goal, but then, you know, they're still happy rivals and all that. The story was fine enough, and I actually remember liking these cutscenes as a kid, but nowadays, uh, I don't know. When it comes to the actual racing itself, it is pretty standard. It just has like two or three little gimmicks to it. Just because they're on the boards doesn't really change all that much. A lot of the course designs are pretty standard. The game actually does control quite well. I remember using the motion controls as a kid on the Wii and you know, it's a hell of a lot better than whatever that 360 Freeriders crap is. The game does manage to implement zero gravity pretty well into its courses and I, I quite like that addition and it really made things more interesting. Otherwise, these would have been quite boring courses. The main other gimmicks of this game is they brought some of the class stuff back from Riders where there's speed, power, and flying. However, this is nowhere near as in-depth as it was in Riders. No, the main gimmick is the zero gravity actions. There's two of them. There's the zero gravity turn where sometimes on these courses there's just like a straight 90 degree sharp ass turn that you could never make without stopping completely. So what you can do instead is where you basically stop zero gravity completely to make this big ass turn. And you know this, I'm pretty indifferent about this. I don't think it really adds much. But the other gimmick is that there's the zero gravity boost where basically you just fly through the course as fast as possible. And you can even boost off like logs and pieces of walls to get even more speed. However, these are designated to just a couple spots on the track, if not just one spot on the track, where if you don't use it right here, it's just going to be a straight line with pretty much nothing. And really, that's why I don't think these gimmicks are all that great, is because a lot of it is incredibly scripted. Like, it's very clear and very obvious where you're supposed to use these zero-gravity gimmicks. And if you don't use them here, you basically aren't using them at all on the course. I think that it should be a lot more free-flowing where you can use it anywhere on the course, but that's not what we have. And because it's so predetermined, I found that a lot of the courses just aren't very interesting after the first one or two times you go through them. And in the story mode, you go through some of these courses more than one or two times. I'd say all in all, Zero Gravity is a pretty average racing game that can be fun with friends and fun in short bursts, but really nothing beyond that. Just a pretty average racing game. And is it worth playing nowadays? Not really. Music, music slaps though. That shit's good.
The next game on our list is the latest in the Sonic Racing series, and that is Team Sonic Racing by Sumo Digital on the Switch, PS4, Xbox, and computer. And there's also some phone versions, but we're not including mobile versions on this list. Now, I recently just played through this game, and that's why I uh, made this list. This was the last game I was missing, and I thought this game was just okay. I think, though, out of the three main Sonic and All-Stars Racing games, that this is the weakest of the three. The game still runs on the Sonic All-Stars engine, so the cars control exactly the same as they did in the previous two games. They still feel great, they're nice to control, the drifting feels good, and there is a sense of speed in the game as well. All of that is solid. The main gimmick of the game is this team mechanic, where it's kind of like Sonic Heroes, where it's teams of three that are all racing together to try to beat the other characters that are in this race. And at the end of every race, all the points are added up to figure out who won the race, such as coming in first gets you 10, coming in second gets you 8, and it keeps going on. And you know, this is a really interesting concept, it really is, and with friends, like a bunch of friends playing this online, it, it actually is really fun, and I think it's really well implemented. The problem is, is that, well, there isn't exactly a ton of people playing online. So you end up teaming up with the AI, and the AI isn't exactly great, and this whole team mechanic, it kind of goes out the window when you're doing it with AI, and it just feels kind of more annoying than anything else. And sure, you can race without the team mechanic, but then that just makes these tracks even more bare bones. A lot of the tracks in this game, I just don't think are all that amazing. Like, a lot of them are really standard and not all that exciting. I think the courses in the previous two games are far better than these courses, and these courses feel very standard. There's not a ton of courses that I can even think of off the back of my hand, like I could for a dozen of the courses in the previous two games. Also the selection of characters is just weird, like, why is Zavok here? Who the hell wants to play as Zavok? And why did we get rid of the Sega characters? Like, this was the only way some of these Sega characters got any love these days. Why is it just Sonic? I That always bothered me. There is a story in this game and it, it, it's just stupid, like it, it really is just stupid. It's a bunch of still images to tell some basic plot of why they're racing and I'm not even going to go over it. The story mode, I thought it got pretty repetitive, especially by the end and I was not huge on it at all. But this is a very fine racing game, but that's all it really is, just fine or slightly above average. I wouldn't say go out of your way to even play it unless you've got a bunch of buddies that want to play it with you otherwise I'd say it's probably a skip or to go play one of the other two Sonic and All-Stars racing games. Our next racing game is the original Sonic Riders developed by Sonic Team for the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox in 2006. Sonic Riders sees all of the Sonic characters racing around on these extreme gears which are either hover boards, hover skates, or hover bikes. When it comes to the racing in this game, it is very complex. See, all of the gears, they all handle very differently, they control differently, and it's going to take a bit of time to get used to these because they're just kind of all over the place. All of them run on air, which is basically fuel. You can get more fuel from doing tricks or a station and fueling up, basically. There's a boost which uses a ton of air, and this is a speed boost. You can even attack other players if you catch them in that boost. There's a drift that also uses air to get a boost. There's even charge jump which you do at the end of ramps to do a bunch of cool tricks there's turbulence you can ride in yeah there's a lot going on in this game there's even parts where you rotate the analog stick and then you bring the classes in. you see there's three types of classes there's speed flying and power where power can smash through obstacles fly can fly in designated areas and speed can grind on rails you got that most people don't there's so much complexity in this game and there's so many different ways to race and I think it's so cool as a kid I thought it was just awesome how many different ways you could go about these courses whether you were power flying or speed and I really liked how many different gimmicks they threw in there sure it is a bit overbearing and to someone who just started playing this game like it's gonna be out of control you're gonna be like what the fuck is even going on the game is totally not a pick up and play kind of game it, it just is not a pick up and play kind of game it's one of those with the really high skill ceiling and it's really hard to master and get good at this game but I found it so rewarding especially as a kid I thought it was amazing the tracks fully take advantage of how much crazy shit is going on in this game and I really liked all of them I think the track designs are great the sense of speed in this game is unparalleled in almost any of these other racing games on this list like the sense of speed fantastic especially when you're just boosting on by it's great 
The game is actually pretty challenging thanks to these complexities and every character has their own stats and little attributes to them which is great. Character roster is great also. There's even some Sega throwbacks in there like Monkey Ball Knights, Space Channel 5, and this was the game to introduce the Babylon Rogues. The game even has a story in it that introduces the Babylon Rogues. It goes over their history and why they're here and what they're about and you know, I really like the story actually. The ending is pretty silly but I did like the story. I have had a ton of fun with this game with friends and over the years and I can really appreciate everything it did. I think this game is actually really underrated. It is one of the more underrated racing games and one of the more underrated Sonic games. I thought it was very overlooked and if you haven't tried it these days, I can say that it might be worth trying, but just know it's not going to be easy to get into. Our next game is Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, released in 2010 by Sumo Digital on pretty much every platform at the time. I remember picking this game up day one, very excited to play it. I love all of the Sega characters, I loved the Sonic characters that were involved, and I like that we finally had another kart racer for Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, we had the board stuff, we had the running, and we had the crappy Sonic Drift, and now we have them in cars again. And this turned out to be a pretty solid racer with a really good cast of characters. There's a lot of Sonic characters obviously here, but there's a lot of Sega characters like Jet Set Radio, like Crazy Taxi, Fantasy Zone, Monkey Ball, Billy Hatcher, Samba de Amigo, and even House of the Dead. The courses were all representative of Sega franchises as well, and I thought they were all actually pretty good. There's no bad course in the game, and I think that they all were really fun to race through. The controls were superb in the game, feeling more like a mix of Konami Crazy Racers, Crash Team Racing, and Mario Kart, just kind of all of them together to make its own unique thing. And the items were surprisingly tame. They were not on Mario Kart levels of overpowered and didn't really do all that much in the grand scheme of things. And it really came down to skill, which was a really, really nice to see, especially after playing so much Mario Kart Wii. It was really nice to see a kart racer that just didn't totally overexpose the items. There was actually a really nice single player to this game as well with missions, time trials, Grand Prix, and there was a bunch to unlock all the characters, cosmetics, and music. The music in this game is great. It's some of Sega's best music. And then the game had some really stellar online play that I have a lot of fond memories with playing this game online with friends or with random people. It was really solid, especially on the Wii. Like, this was great. And I think that this is actually a really good racing game. It's not going to blow your mind, and it doesn't do anything all that innovative or new for the genre, but I thought it was still very solid, and it was, at the time, the best Sonic racing game that they had ever, that's ever been made. And it's still one of the best, but it's not the very best. No, I think the best is Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, which came out in 2012, again by Sumo Digital. I think that this is maybe the best kart racer of the 360 PS3 era and probably one of the most underrated racing games of all time. This game took everything that was great about Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing and really upped it a bit. Obviously the cars transform now. See, originally it was just the cars. Now it's cars, boats, and planes. I know it is a bit like Diddy Kong Racing now, but hear me out, it's actually really well implemented. Flying in the plane is some of the best plane controls you'll have in a racing game, and the boat physics in this game are superb. The water is like really well done, it's really realistic, and it makes for a really enjoyable time. I really enjoyed how much control you get over these vehicles, how they all feel, how great all the courses are, and how amazing the Sega representation is here. It's just really fun to play, it never gets old, the game has a ton of content to it, there are tons of characters, locations, and some of these characters that they put in from Sega, like, haven't been seen in forever. Skies of Arcadia is here, Knights is here, like, it's all good stuff. The single player content is actually really engaging, it's really fun, and I've actually gone all the way through it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Unlocking stuff is great in this game, and then the online is totally superb as well. I have had a ton of fun memories over the years playing this game online and it's some of the most online play that I've had for any racing game. I've just had a really good time with it. Game had a great presentation, fantastic, fan freaking tastic music. It is so good the music in this game. And then a bunch of weird cameos on the PC version like Yogg's cast in Team Fortress and uh, Wreck-It Ralph. I mean, I'll never get that stuff but Either way, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed is a great racing game that I have no problem recommending to anybody who likes racing games. 
or if you just like Sega because this is a great representation of Sega. It's the Sega I know and love where it's not just Sonic and Yakuza and I really yeah, I just really like the game. Um, a lot of these Sonic games are really up and down. It's clear that Sonic racing games got better in later years, I guess. But uh, we'll have to see what's next. If we get another Sonic racing game, hopefully that's not like Team Sonic Racing and more like Transformed. And I'm really excited for whatever we get next. I'm sure we'll have another racing Sonic game and show. So this will be outdated one day. But either way, hope everyone has a great day. Tell me your favorite Sonic racing game in the comments and uh, buy, like, sub, all that stuff. See ya.